great outdoors. Hello humans, it's Tom in camera. And as you can see, we are not in the studio anymore. We are in glorious rural South Gloucestershire on location of the feature film Sacrilege from Bad Blood Films. Why are we here, you might ask? Well, because JP is busy rigging some smoke effects for the opening sequence whereby a guy explodes into flames. Oh. Sounds fun. <laughs> Low budget indie features are a hotbed of creativity, ingenuity and problem solving. In the opening scene of Sacrilege, a man escapes from an unknown terror that resides in the surroundings of a house in the woods. But as he tries to flee, he is engulfed in smoke and flames by a supernatural power, meeting his gory end before he can reach water. JP has been working with the stunt crew in order to get as much of this sequence in camera as possible, using remote smoke devices to begin the supernatural effect before the flames kick in. This sequence also requires a full body burn, with the stuntman playing the part of the ill-fated character. The sequence requires him to be set on fire and run from the driveway to the nearby pool, collapsing just before he reaches it. The final shot shows his face melted beyond recognition, with licks of fire still dotted about his skull. Due largely to budgetary constraints, the stunt crew could only perform a half body burn, meaning the legs, back and arms, not the stomach, chest or face. And so once principal photography was completed, it was our task to augment this footage with added fire elements in order to create the full body inferno that the script required. Now, of course, there's stock elements out there that you can purchase licenses for. But what if you have a sequence of shots that need a really specific size or shape or angle? There's every chance that that stock footage is not going to be right for your needs. What if you need movement in those flames, like in our case with our running Burning Man? And then, of course, you could go down the CGI route. But when it comes to elemental imagery, things like water, things like fire, it's our opinion that you can never truly replicate the chaotic nature of something on fire in specific conditions. Put simply, you just can't beat the real thing. So let's go make some fire. So we analysed the footage back at the studio and got ourselves some body parts that we could use as surfaces on which to shoot our fire elements. We start off with a tabletop setup using copper pipe attached to a gas canister with holes drilled along the length of the pipe to give us a good spread of controllable fire. We use a few different shapes and sizes of pipe to give us as much variation as possible. As our scene takes place at night, we've opted to shoot against black so we can more easily match the exposure of the original photography, as well as easily pull a key from the black background. We also added some wind to some of these setups, courtesy of Numi and a hairdryer, to give a turbulent motion to the flames to better match the action when tracked onto our burning man as he runs. For many of the shots, we knew which parts of the body needed to have supplemented fire effects, such as his arms and head. For these shots, we set up proxy or dummy forms that we could set light to. This gave us flames that conformed better to those shapes and gave us a better match for compositing. We're just using basic lighter fluid here as it burns big, quick and clean, which means it won't damage our dummy head. For the final shot of the sequence, where the actor's head is to be ablaze in his final moments, we aligned the live action shot with our dummy head using the onion skin overlay feature of our camera monitor. This enabled us to see both the live action end position and our live feed in half opacity, so as to enable us to line up our fire effect accurately for the overlay effect. As we need the burn to last longer for this final shot, we use a flammable contact adhesive. And as it's a viscous fluid, it'll also give us some nice sizzling bubbles on the surface. Cool, huh? Okay, now it's time to see how JP takes all of those elements and creates our final composited shots. But, while I've still got you, if you're enjoying the show, maybe give us a little likey. It's just there. Remember to subscribe to the channel and remember to hit that notification bell icon if you want to be notified the minute we post the next piece of FX Joy. All right, I've said my piece, off your pop. Hi guys, JP here. I'm going to take you for a quick overview of how we use the fire elements that we shot in the studio and applied them to our live action. As Tommy said, you can't beat the real thing. So with that in mind, we formulated a way for us to shoot smaller fire elements to then combine together to make larger scale effects. 
For the body burn effect, our stuntman could only perform so many takes and with only partial sections of his body on fire for real, so we knew that these gaps had to be later filled by our flame elements. After we gathered a number of fire elements, I tend to gather them into groups and make a video of thumbnails. This makes it easier to identify a section of a clip by its file name and timecode, so as to make it a lot easier to extract a section of the footage that looks like it will work for any given shot. Since the action of our stuntman starts with running, the real flames are turbulent by nature, being blown by the wind as he moves, but also as the real fire is burning its fuel. With this in mind, I selected a few of our element flames that had turbulent motion to them, and used those to 2D track to our stuntman's movements in the areas that needed to be filled. The benefit of this hybrid approach was to ensure more retakes from our stuntman, whilst keeping him safer by not having to do a full body burn, as well as know that our augmentation of flames could be made to match live action fire and benefit massively from the real interactive lighting that those real flames gave us in the shot. For the final shot of the sequence, we see our man in a bit of a bad way, skin burnt off and with residual flames still burning his lifeless body. To achieve this, we shot a dummy head with burning rubber cement over the face area. This gave us a nice bubbling sticky fire that worked well to overlay onto the blistered and burnt makeup. Other additional elements included burning leather and plastic pieces to give a deforming look to the burning surface. The singeing hair was achieved by burning steel wool and overlaying that as an element separately. The whole shot was then treated with a subtle heat haze blur to help sell the effect. For a separate sequence right at the end of the film, our heroine breaks a satanic curse by burning an effigy of the village cult. Since this was shot out of sequence, we couldn't actually set fire to the wooden prop for real. So our elements serve as a solution. We dressed in a practical gas burner just in front of the figure for interactive light and added some smoke to come from the base. Later, in post, I added many of our fire elements to help sell the effect that the effigy was on fire. This included additional elements of smaller twigs and branches being burnt and multiplied many times to build up a bigger fire effect. Having real fire in the live action plate to match to is always a huge benefit. In this case, it allowed us to obtain interactive light that you would get from a fire that size. So there you go, a little glimpse into how you can include fire elements into live action for safety and continuity solutions. JP out. So in summary, fire's good when treated with respect in safe conditions with an extinguisher at the ready. We hope that was a strong demonstration of how using real elements is really the best approach for this kind of compositing work. Oh, and watch out. We're going to be launching our Patreon in the new year where we're going to be making all of these elements from our shoots available to you to play with. Exciting times. See you there.